In this video, I'm going to show you a repository that Unity provided to us that has many examples for meshing. I'm gonna be walking you through three different scenes that are available. One of them is gonna be occlusion, the other one is gonna have classifications, and the last one is gonna show us how to use normals from the exported meshes. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so I got three different recordings of how the demo scenes work. So the one that I'm gonna show you first is going to be the classification. Then we'll move over the occlusion meshes and also the normals. So this is the classification scene that I'm gonna be showing you in Unity. So if I hit play, what I did is I started scanning everything and it, they also have a projectile. So you can do projectile and basically starts hitting and launching the spheres. So the different colors on the scene, like this wall is yellow, the, there's red areas. That means that the lighter has actually recognized that to be a different classification. So it might detect that this is a table, it might detect that this is a wall, and then the floor, and then so on. So it just has different classifications that are currently available. I'm gonna be putting some of the different classifications that are available in the description of this video. But that's how that works. It's actually very performant. There is a lot of spheres in this demo. Then on the occlusion, the word says it, I'm trying to occlude any, any objects that you know are behind the, the actual cup that I have right here. There's also some spheres on the very bottom. So if I hit play, you guys can see how that works. So it's not perfect, but it works really well. So if you look at the spheres that are on the bottom, I'm actually trying to go up and down. You can see how those ones get occluded. So if I go here, right about here, you can see how they're starting to get, you know, hidden from the occlusion. And then they, they start disappearing as soon as they see there is a table right above it. So that is really powerful. It's it's crazy how much is going on in here. Same thing in here, there is an iPad Pro box and the spheres are behind it and it, they're occluding perfectly. And I mean, it's not perfect, but it works. it works really well. The other thing, it's basically creating meshes and it's showing me the normals on those meshes. So that is an option on the actual meshing script that I'm going to be showing you in Unity, where you can tell it to whether to export normals or not show the normals on the meshes. So there's a little bit of transparency in it so that we can actually see the normals. So that's how these three ones work. I'm going to show you, let's go ahead and pause this. So I'm going to show you some of those scenes in the AR foundation sample. So I'm also going to be putting this in the description. So this is provided by Unity. I'm really glad that they did this. There's a lot of different examples in here, but the ones that I want to focus on are the examples, the changes that they added to AR foundation for that zero. If you go all the way to the very bottom, you're going to see that they added a meshing section and also the classification meshes, which is the scene that I just show you. And just know that this only works with AR kit and you have to have the iPad OS 13.4 that comes with a leader scanner. So that's going to be on the iPad Pro, you know, the, the 2020 that you just get released. And then if you have those requirements, then you're going to be able to run these classification meshes scenes. You're going to be able to run the normal meshes and also the occlusion meshes. So that's the one that I'm going to show you. So let's jump into Unity. So the way that it works is, you know, they have all the assets, but if you expand the scenes, they have everything organized by area. So in this case, I'm looking at meshing. So everything about meshing is gonna be here, including the scripts, except for some scripts that are coming from, you know, the base implementations. But for the most part, anything that has to do with meshing is gonna be in here. So if you go to meshing, there's gonna be multiple scenes in here. One of them is gonna be the classification meshing, which is the one that I just show you, and also the occlusion meshes and also the normal meshes. So those ones are also added if you go to build settings. They are right here. I just already exported them and that's how I was able to show you the demo. So let's go ahead and look at the first one. I'm gonna look at the classification meshing and let's go ahead and make this smaller so it's easier for me to sort it. And I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. So again, this is using AR Foundation. So we have for AI session origin, just know, and I show you that on the previous video that the meshing component has to be inside the AR session origin. The reason for that is, is obvious, obvious because if you have a look at the previous video, it'll be obvious to you. But if you haven't, anything that you're adding to basically in AR, if you're adding an object in AR, it needs to go into this object. The reason for that is because it can keep, you know, the appropriate scaling. So in Unity it takes care of all the scaling for us. So that's why we're, we're adding the meshing component inside of the AR session origin so that all the transformations and all the complicated stuff gets handled by Unity, all we have to worry about adding objects to be a child of that object. 
So the components that are going to be required, and I show you that a little bit on the previous video, is going to be the AR Mesh Manager. This one I already discussed on the previous video, but in this case it has a different component, which is going to be the non-render mesh prefab. This is just a default component. It doesn't have anything in it. It doesn't render anything like it says. And then the density, this is going to be the density of the, the triangles that get generated for the mesh. So if you hover over this, it's going to tell you, you know, zero is going to be, you know, less tessellated than it's going to be one. So if you want to have an object that has more triangle, like it, it looks, it has more details, then you want to have that number be higher. In this case, it looks like unit has 0.5, so we're going to leave it as that. We're also exporting a normal, so you can tell it whether to export normals or not. So this is enabled, and it says right there that normals is requested for each vertex. And then everything else is disabled, and then the concurrent size is set to a 4. The, they also have a toggle mesh classification, so if you want to enable or disable that. For some reason, they didn't add a UI component to be able to disable or you know, enable that, but if you wanted to do, you know, disable it through a UI, you can just basically access that property on the toggle mesh classification and you can enable it or disable it. So one of the components that is depending is going to be the mesh manager, which we have here. And that's just going to be a property that is accessible through the toggle mesh classification. Then the other components here is going to be this mesh classification fracking, which I, I started looking at it and it was a little bit complicated, so I decided just to let Unity do the hard work and I can show you how it works. So they're basically what they're doing is they're they're converting, they're grabbing the base mesh that comes from the lighter. So lighter is going to generate a mesh for us and then that mesh is going to be sent to Unity, Unity gets it. But what Unity is doing is they are separating the meshes into in, into different meshes. So when the classification detects that we have a wall is going to create a mesh specifically for that wall. The same thing with the floor. If, if they detect the floor, then they're going to create a mesh specifically. So they get the base mesh and then they grab that mesh, create a brand new mesh by, by just grabbing the, the classifications. Any, any triangles that are classified as floor, they create a new mesh based on that. So the same thing applies for, for walls, for floor, for ceiling, stable seat window and door and i believe these are the only ones that are available by air kit right now and i'm pretty sure they're going to be adding more but the way the way that it works they have different prefabs in here that are, that are available each of them have a different material so if you look at the material for the ceiling if it's this color that means that it detected a ceiling if it's a door it's going to be yellow and then so on you can also click on the materials here and you're going to see that they have different materials assigned so that's what unity is doing in there in that component so we could also look at the code if you guys want to want to look at the code. I am um, I looked at it already, but it's basically what I just explained to you. It's just different properties in here that have different mesh filters, each of them for a different different classifier. And then if you go down here on the awake method, they have different actions that are mapped to a mesh filter. So they have a method that basically is breaking up the mesh into different meshes because they are creating a specific mesh based on a classifier. So that's basically what they're doing here. They're, they're binding to the, the different meshes that get added. So as soon as a mesh gets, at, gets added, so if we detected a new, for instance, we detected a new mesh getting added by the lighter, it's going to be calling this method and then the same thing with the update and also the remove. I'm not gonna go through some of these methods, just know that they are available in here and you guys can look at it, modify it depending on your use cases. So that's the that's that component, that scene. So if we go back in here and we look at, let me go ahead and close this. If we look at the other scenes that we have also available, if we can get back into that, you, you look at the normals. Normals is pretty simple, well, because most of the work is already done, but they also have the AR session origin, just like I show you on the other one. In this case, they have a plain man, an AR plane manager and also an AR input manager. I think on the other one, they also had the same thing. Let me go ahead and look at that. Yeah, it's the same structure for all. And if I look at the, if I look at the last one, let me go ahead and look at occlusion. That one also has the same. So all three scenes I'm are using the AR session origin, AR session, the AR input manager, and AR plane manager. So let me go ahead and get back into this one, which is the normal meshes. We look at the meshing. So this one is exactly the same. The difference is that they have a different material associated with the component that gets the mesh filter component that is on the mesh prefab. So if I click on that and you go into the prefab, that has a normal overlay material. So it's using the only normal overlay. 
So if you look at that, that basically is going to give you, you know, more information about the normals. And that's also, you know, one of the things that is available. And the last one that I want to show you that is really interesting is going to be the occlusion meshes. So if we look at that one, same components on the AR session origin, but there are a couple of more components added to the AR camera. The reason for that is because they're using a projectile script to be able to instantiate and basically span the spheres that you saw in the video. So this one has the AR occlusion manager. I showed you that on previous videos. In this case, they're using the best, the best uh, quality. So it's going to give you the best quality on the occlusion detection. It's actually going to capture depth. So the higher the number, the more you know, the more processing power that it's going to need. In this case, they're using best. The the iPad has enough resources to be able to do this. So that's why they're using best on both of those. They also have the project projectile launcher. It's pretty simple. It's basically just instantiating an object and then spawning those objects. And then the AR camera manager. I think this is all you know bare bones. It's already already set up that way. And then the meshing component is just using the occlusion occlusion mesh prefab. If you go to that prefab, it has the occlusion material. In this case, is is transparent because they they didn't want to show any colors on that material. We just want to you know, show you a real scene, but in that case, it's going to be, it's going, it's going to have occlusion on it. And I show you that at the beginning of the video. So if we go back in here, it's just a, a transparent mesh filter. Well, a transparent material assigned to a mesh filter. I think that's a better description. The density is set up that, the same way that we had before. Normals are set up the same way. And then the concurrent Q size is set up the same way as before. So I'm going to be putting the location of these, you know, these also actual GitHub repository. So if you guys want to download it, go ahead and download it. And if you guys have any other questions about anything that I just show you, please let me know in the comments. Thank you guys.